Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about how to build a um, projection box for a uh, telescope. And this is basically going to be used to um, look at the sun in a safe manner. Uh, you know, the sun, of course, as we all know, is our closest star. And it's actually a pretty interesting and um, fascinating object to look at. But you've got to be careful because it produces a lot of energy. Uh, matter of fact, I was reading the other day that uh, the sun basically converts about 4 million tons of hydrogen every second, uh, which is even more amazing considering that it's been doing it for about, um, what, 5 billion years. So, so definitely have to take precautions. You never look at the sun unprotected. Uh, you never look at the sun with a telescope that doesn't have the appropriate filtering. But you can, uh, you can develop or build a, uh, a projection box to actually project the sun's image uh, indirectly onto something uh, like this. So the whole idea is that the telescope will be pointed at the sun, uh, the light rays will go down the tube, and then go through an eyepiece, and then simply be projected. So here we're not using a filter, we're just simply uh, making a projection of what the sun uh, looks like. Now, the sun is also coming out of an 11 year cycle, and uh, basically that means that there'll be more activity, uh, meaning more sunspots, and of course, uh, you know, it's good. sunspots are just fascinating because they change, they appear, they disappear, and they're actually kind of fun to watch and track over time. Uh, of course, this is only for visible light. You know, there are specialty telescopes that uh, you can buy that uh, you can filter in different wavelengths of light and so forth. But uh, for our purposes, this is a relatively inexpensive way to view the sun in a relatively safe way. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to construct it. And uh, this is a design for a refractor. I have a four inch refractor here. And if you have something else, um, well, you can try to modify it or, or see what you can do. But uh, right now, this is just uh, for a refracting type telescope. And we'll go ahead and uh, see how we actually constructed this. All right, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the parts list for making this uh, solar projector. Uh, of course, you'll, you'll need your telescope. So I'm using a uh, four inch uh, refractor here. This is a Vixen. Uh, had lots of um, really good use uh, with it over the years, so it should make a really good solar projector. And the whole idea here is that we'll be making kind of a, a box-like structure um, using these uh, sheets of plywood. So I, I bought two of these. Uh, these are 12 inch square, uh, quarter inch thick. And the idea here is to have one end attached here to the scope and then the other end will be attached uh, further back. So this will form the projection screen and this will just be um, used as both a, a kind of a, a shade from the sun itself and uh, as part of the structure as well. And to do that we're going to use these uh, threaded rods and these are quarter inch uh, by two foot. So the idea here is we're going to drill holes in the corners of these sheets and then simply uh, run these threaded rods through there and attach them with some um, nuts, nuts and bolts. So we've got uh, about eight of these bolts here. Got a bunch of washers, I think like 16 of those. And then we're going to use wing nuts uh, to actually tighten everything up. And I like the wing nuts because it makes taking things apart easily if you need to transport or whatever. Always buy a few extras. Uh, seems like I'm always losing these pieces if I'm taking things apart and putting them back together. So they're pretty inexpensive. So I'd always buy a couple extra. Um, we're going to actually have to attach one of these pieces of plywood here to the scope. And that means we're going to have to drill a hole inside of this. So to do that, uh, what I've done is I've found the center of this piece of plywood, just drew some diagonal lines, and then used the compass to kind of map out where we need to drill. Or actually not drill, but actually cut it out. And to do that, what you can do is take some painter's tape here and wrap it around the tube. 
and then kind of find out what the length is uh, for one wrap. Uh, so in this example here it was 14 and a half inches and if you divide that by 2 times pi you get the radius so it comes out to 2.3 inches. Uh, actually I'm going to go a little bit closer on the inside of this because I wanted to fit on the inside not resting on the outside. I think it will be a little bit better fit. So I made it a little bit smaller and just use a compass to uh, draw that out and that's, that'll be where we will cut out our uh, board. And then really the last part is this piece of aluminum. This is uh, eighth of an inch by three quarter of an inch by three feet. And this will actually hold the structure in place. So this will attach to the telescope. And then uh, once we find the, find the balance point with the eyepiece and everything like that, uh, we'll cut this to fit and then bend this at a 90 degree angle and attach it to this plywood to hold it on like that. Okay, so that's really about it. Uh, looking at about maybe forty to fifty dollars worth of materials here. Uh, again, you can get the plywood sheets at a, a craft store, hobby store. Um, this is just typical hardware you can find at um, the hardware store, and, um, and that's really about it. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of cutting here, and we'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, so uh, we've done a little bit of drilling and sawing, and here's the uh, board that will fit at the end of the telescope. So I went ahead and uh, uh, cut out the hole there, and that'll fit over the telescope like this. Okay, and again we'll hold that in place with that aluminum rod that we, we bought, and uh, we'll work like that. Worked out pretty good, turned out pretty clean hole there. And then I also drilled out the corners. Okay, so that's where the threaded rods uh, will go through to hold everything together. Okay, and when I when I drilled this out, I, I kept the boards together. So if there's any variability here in the placement of the holes, you know, we'll want them to kind of be the same on both ends. So I just made some registration marks here uh, using a pen so when we put this together we just know the orientation of this uh, really that's about it it wasn't too hard it took about maybe 10 minutes to do uh, if you don't have power tools um, you may find someone who can uh, lend you a drill or a, or a jigsaw uh, if you're not familiar with using those uh, tools uh, maybe someone will help you to do that so anyway that's it and uh, on to the next step Alright, so the next step is actually to put this all together and what I've done is taken those um, threaded rods and basically put them through the uh, holes I made in the plywood. I did go ahead and paint the plywood, uh, makes it look a little bit nicer and maybe keeps the heat down a little bit too when you're outside. So the next part is to actually attach it to the telescope and what I did before uh, before I did anything, I, so I kind of tried to play around where the focus would be. So I did take the telescope outside and just took a, a blank piece of paper and just kind of played around with where this uh, focus should be for this eyepiece. So it kind of gave me an idea of uh, basically how far uh, this would come out. And then uh, the next part, what I did was I actually took this and then kind of hung it on the end of the scope here so it kind of make sure it fits just like that and then of course release the clutches on the actual mouth itself but tried to find the balance point so once I did that I took that aluminum piece and uh, drilled some holes and attached it to the telescope and then made that 90 degree bend here with some additional holes now depending on how your telescope is set up and you know how you need to balance it and so forth you might actually have to drill a few more holes in this aluminum and uh, make this more adjustable but for right now uh, I just made it adjustable for this particular eyepiece and uh, in the future if I add some more accessories or do something different I'll probably have to modify that as well. Put this on just simply take this projection box and I've got 
and a bolt and then I'll put a wing nut on here. And I find it's easier if you kind of attach one end pretty well first. And then uh, go ahead and do the other one. Another thing I found out is if you slightly over drill these holes, make them a little bit bigger, it helps quite a bit. Try to fit it in a little bit. This is a little bit tight. Tighten that up. Just going to line it correctly. And go ahead and tighten that up as well. Now there is a little bit of wobble here, a little bit of play, and probably going to go ahead and put a shim under here, not to kind of keep it a little bit more rigid, but uh, for now that works okay. So there you have it. That's all attached. Uh, you can kind of see what it looks like there, and um, you know again we'll take it outside and we'll do a test on it and uh, see how it works. Okay, so we have the scope out here on the um, on the observing pad, and have the projection box attached, as I've shown you earlier. And what I've done is I've, in order to point it at the sun in a safe way, I actually look at the shadow that's being cast behind everything. And what I do is I try to minimize that. That way you don't have to look at the sun at all. And there you go. So. Right there you can see the image of the sun, and I've also clipped on a, uh, a piece of paper there. But um, if you look really, really close, let's see if we can get a close up here, you can actually see a couple little sunspots right there, and there's a grouping right there. So uh, again, this is a really safe way to kind of look at the sun's image and uh, see some interesting features there. Uh, you can you know, track this every day and you can watch them go across the surface and um, you know, that's pretty cool. One way to also look at it is if you jiggle it a little bit and you can see the sunspots there and sometimes you see a little something on the paper that's not a sunspot, but it's pretty apparent uh, what you can see there and you'll have to move it every once in a while. But uh, basically that's how the projection system works. Uh, again, this is something that's relatively safe. Uh, the only caveat here is, you know, keep your hand away from the lens here, the uh, eyepiece, uh, because right in front of it, it gets really, really super hot and it can actually burn you. So, got to be a little bit cautious, cautious still, because again, there is a lot of energy being generated uh, by the sun here. But otherwise, this is a great way, safe way to view the sun. And again, you can have, you know, people stand around and look at the image and you know, take pictures and so forth. Uh, that's about it. Uh, this design, by the way, is completely hackable, so that means uh, this is a good start, but uh, I'm sure somebody out there will come up with some better ideas and, uh, you know, make things even better yet. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, happy viewing.